Hey guys, I'm James Sinclair and this is Building the Business. This is my vlog where you watch me building my business here in the UK right now. And this is episode two of this vlog. I want you to really hone in on this one is at the end of the video, you'll see me negotiating with our partners in Denmark uh, on pricing and negotiation. I think it's quite a rare thing to see that on the internet. If you like what we're doing, make sure you hit subscribe. Give me one of those as well. And comment below as the video is going on. I'd love to know what you're thinking as we build the business. This is Building the Business. Let's go. Oh God, this is just one more question. I will answer this. We'll try and teach your son about business and entrepreneurship. If my son Harvey or my next child that's on the way has a real love for business and entrepreneurship, my God, I'll teach them everything I know and help them till the nth degree but only if they want to, and they have the heart and the mindset to do it. If they don't, then I won't expect that of them. I have no expectations of my children taking over this business or any businesses or anything that I do. Um, I'm happy for them to be shareholders and owners, but I will only allow them to run it, man it, manage it, and lead it should they want to. Uh, I have no expectations of my children having anything to do with this business unless they want to. And I think there are so many family businesses, especially in the farming community, that expect their children to take on their business. Some people just want to go and work for someone and they want to, they want to work to live. Not everyone wants to live to work. And I think that was a great question to end this on. Um, Maybe we should talk about that more in some videos, Chad, because I think that's a real powerful thing. Three new subscribers, 224 views. Be a landlord, they said. It'd be easy, they said. Please just let me know that uh, one of our properties in Brentwood, in Essex, um, we had some workmen there and they've pulled a pipe up and it's literally like the rainforest cafe inside the house. Um, so Tracy's going to do with that. I haven't had anything to do with that, but uh, she is processing that. And that's the, ta the power of a team really, is being able to get more stuff done by having people around you. Michael over here, just come and have a little look through this, this screen here. Michael is negotiating a new partnership with um, a property agent. Let's see if we can get that over the line to manage all of our properties and a mortgage brokerage. And then me and James Burt and Chudlington are now off to um, and do a photo shoot for all of our new promotional shots. And we put these on our thumbnails on YouTube, etc. etc. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa! That's how many outfits I'm in today. We could be there a while. <laughs> it's just a next jumper, Nathan. Next jumper, Nathan. Well, you didn't give me much, uh... Next jumper, Nathan. Shirts. Something Nathan doesn't own. <laughs> right, who's driving? Sideways, if that makes sense. <laughs> no. Sitting on it, but on the side. Well, that's right. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I think she means like, kind of like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. think I think business owners, entrepreneurs might put the effort into doing this stuff because I think it's a waste of money. But my God, good photos, good imagery, yeah. it's such a great investment um, yeah, in marketing, in my opinion. I was just uh, done all the photo shooting, all the different outfits, because throughout the year when Chance makes all of our videos, we need all these marketing shots and we're about speaking, they ask for stuff. And it's just good to have the right gear. Thumbnails on YouTube where I can get all the expressions, it increases our click-through rate. Um, and Chance and Mark, we work all that stuff out so that we get more people to watch our videos, and that's what we're doing. I'm not filming this until we have 100,000 YouTube subscribers. I don't, whilst we've got, no, so there's three properties. There's one in Bournemouth that we're buying, which is a block yeah. of flats. One in Altrincham, which is another block of flats and a house in Stoke-on-Trent. Then we're doing them in three different ways. The Altrincham is a bridge. We've got the bridge and I've instructed the bridger and they're going to be in touch with you soon. I just wanted to introduce myself, say hello and say, um, do you just want to keep Stoke-on-Trent? Yeah, we'll do that then. What's the company name? What's the new company we've just sold? Uh, you know what I'm asking about. <laughs> yeah, he does, Please. doesn't he? Please. He's, he's sitting Please. there thinking, I know exactly what they want, but until I get my case number. What looks like, you know exactly, you know, I've been speaking to you for weeks about this. You know exactly what I need. I don't know any case numbers. So why, I'm not, why have I got to pay fees twice on that? They'll pay the fees for that one. 
but you've got to pay the fees to purchase it. I'm now going to ring Heather and just see if she understands the solicitor that does everything for us. But I'm trying not to give it all to her because she's doing this industrial estate we're buying. And Why I, are you on the phone? Ask her about that change of tenancy agreement. She's doing other stuff for us and I don't want to bombard her. What, whilst I've got you here, I'm just, I've got a couple of projects I just want to quickly talk to you about. Yeah, well, I'll, try, I'll try and see what I can do on that. The next thing is I'm buying in Bournemouth a block of flats for £850,000. What I'm saying is, does that qualify for multiple dwellings relief? Yeah, so basically what we've just done is um, multiple dwellings relief. I just need to get some chapter and verse from another solicitor to give to our solicitor. We want to make sure we get everything because the savings is hundreds of thousands of pounds. In fact, they don't qualify for multiple dwellings relief. That changes everything yeah. and it means possibly we can't do it. Sometimes you need to get another lawyer that specialises in a, an area like stamp duty to write a letter to your lawyer telling why that happens and then everyone gets comfortable around it. It's complex, it's complex, that's what we're doing. Nearly every country in the world you can listen to this and I'm joined here today by Nathan Winch who was my co-host really on the YouTube superstar documentary. <laughs> I was looking for it, mega hit. Hello. Clocked up thousands of views. Yeah. Thousands, thousands of views. Jamesy Burt's in the background. You can say hello, I'm sure. Hello. Hello. Chads is there as well, filming this so we can leverage the content, get it visually as well. Chads, give us a hello. Hey up. Hey up. He's from up now. If you want to build a property empire, if you come and go to some seminars, read some books, listen to some podcasts on property, I think you will be able to leverage your money better, find better return on investments, find better investments that are gonna cash flow you more. Um, and that's what we sort of demonstrated in our, our documentary. I suppose, Nathan, my question for you is, if someone had 100,000 pounds to invest in property, how many properties, how, many, how much cash could you generate them knowing your methods per annum? What would their rent roll be? <laughs> Why not to get on the roof? <laughs> Do I look like a monkey? No, I just thought... Oh, people will like this. I wish you'd have got that shot where Michael was going through all the companies. I'm sure you got it. No, I didn't. You were standing there. The worst thing about it, everyone else is audio is worse because you were eating the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y
because you're going to eat with an alpaca. Mm. You are not booking it for the food, but mm. then we need to do the food really good. You know, like really traditional, like chicken and chips in a basket, but yeah, the yeah. best possible chips and the most amazing chicken, you know, like, you know, a really nice side oh, salad with some mozzarella simple. balls on it, but you know, but yeah, like some really traditional English stuff. So mm. dessert is apple pie and custard, but it's the best, it's a homemade apple pie. Yeah. Going to be running something next to a visitor attraction that has a day nursery. Tom, Dick and Harry always, at, you know, like Peppa Pig here for the day or whatever it is. And I just, you know, I would rather keep it simple, but the best, you know. And then we've got to contend, we're going to have three alpacas walking around at the same time, you know, and, and that's... So we're off to Stansted Airport tonight. We've got a cheap Hope Premier in. Um, it was flights to 7.30, Stansted Airport. Terrible security, terrible, worst airport ever. Um, and um, we're going, a team of five of us going, Chud's going to document everything. FD's coming, getting very serious with the numbers. MD's coming, getting ready for the operations for uh, launching the biggest teddy bear company in the UK when it comes to make a bear in 2020. So we're, we're finding partners to really grow that business. You all want to follow the whole journey? Come on, let's go. Hey gang, we're in Denmark. We've got partners over here that help us manufacture our teddy bears. We're taking over their distribution in the UK to become the biggest maker bear, teddy bear, wholesale distributor in the UK. Things are going like gangbusters, got a great relationship with them. The team here, FD, Janky, who's heading up. Um, we're gonna go to China as well later on in the year to source more products. She's getting involved in that. Chad's all gonna be there with a the camera, aren't you? Yes, you are. He's nodding behind. Um, and then Aaron's our ND because we're gonna be bringing all that distribution stuff over the UK. There's going to be some quite heavy operations, new stuff for us to deal with because we're moving our warehouse behind this industrial state to move our warehousing over there. It's so exciting, the stuff. And you guys, you guys are going to get to watch all this on the big show. This is Building the Business. <laughs> Good. Get that on truck Why have we got that? <laughs> Sex appeal, that's fine, mate. Sex appeal. <laughs> so, so from our point of view, we're buying at roughly, it costs us £3.35 to... All in, because yeah. it isn't just your cost. We yeah. have a duty on there. Yeah. And yeah. a large part of it is our carriage cost from our warehouse to whichever customer it is. Yeah. So, yeah. and that doesn't even include the warehouse handling costs. Mm. It doesn't include any of Janky's time, our time, flying over here. Yeah. Well, the problem is, what you've got to remember for this though, is, is a big part of our retail plan is to have this range. I want to have, obviously, the lowest amount of stock I can get away with, yeah. because that's going to be a lot of cash outlay. We've got to start that somewhere as well, so it's not just the financials of it costing me the actual stock. It's the simple fact is that with this warehouse, we've got tenants in there, I want the warehouse to be as small as I can get away with. We had an order, you would send it to us and we would distribute it from the UK next day, so your customers are going to love it. Stage two, we then take it and integrate it into our website. We just have a, you know, a business that operates really October, November, December and does very little throughout the rest of the year. You're bigger in the summer, it's an instant solving to our problems and then we've got a bigger business where we can employ someone full time then to go out and sell it. But we're using the cash to, as I say, set up so many different ventures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've just got a ring fence amount of cash for this one at the right time. Now that's before warehousing costs and before our team's costs. So all of this. So to get it to a customer, it's £3.35 and we're selling it for £4.80 on average. So it's one forty-five. but then out of that one forty-five, warehouse costs and all of our time. Insurance, and then you've got rent and rates, and then you've got repairs for the warehouse, and you've got maintenance of the warehouse machinery, and then you've got advertising costs. Yeah. It, it's simple. Basically, if we sell, we do sell about 100,000 bears, so it's about 145,000 gross profit, whole locks at, at this moment in time being sucked up by your overheads. Yeah. And that isn't just a fine. But the finance cost isn't actually the big part of it. I think, I'm being honest, this is what I think. I think you should say, well, actually, they're spending a lot more with us, and they're going to spend a lot more with us. I think that. It's a combination of getting the price down, but also I think you should bring your percentage down a bit based on the volume of sales that we're doing. So if we go under a certain amount, we'll hurry on pay this 25%. But the reality is we're probably going to do a million pounds a year with you 
without working very hard at that. And I think, you know, from the base of fairness that, that you look at that as well. Would you like a cuddle or? Lunch was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is better. Yeah, you put this in now. Yeah, that's, that's the sound module, yeah? Yeah, the sound. And it, it's actually the inserts. We, we want to say it's kind of the inserts. Here? Just for the movie here. Yeah. Then you can bring it home. Yeah. Super. Lars is being filmed, who's our partner here in Denmark, because he's won a, a major business award for building this fantastic company, who we're partnering with to be the distributor in the UK to help us become the best and the biggest in the United Kingdom, give us more firepower. It's a great deal, I'm so pumped about it. And we're just crunching the numbers right now. And it will be 